What's your favorite kind of liquid? Liquid? Liquid. The kind that's wet? Liquid nitrogen is the answer! <laughs> okay, liquid nitrogen. That's a pretty cool liquid. It is. It's also the name of a really cool poker site. What? <laughs> that was interesting. <laughs> nitrogen Sports Poker Room, where the poker guys host free rolls every Sunday. Yeah. Use the link in the description or click up here in order to get access to those free rolls. They're awesome. It's a Bitcoin-only site, so you get withdrawals so fast, 10 to 25 minutes, almost always. Check it out. 2005 was different in poker. It's like the type of wildlife around now on Earth versus the Jurassic period. That's how different poker was <laughs> in 2005. And that, you can see a little bit of that in this hand we're gonna see today from the WPT. It's three-handed at the Mirage Poker Showdown in 2005. They've all already won $280,000, but there's a huge amount of money left to play for. Second place is almost $600,000, and first place is $1.15 million. The two chip leaders are about to clash. The effective stack is Ted Force with about 40 blinds. They don't make the structures like that anymore. They yeah. don't make the payouts like that because it's just too much. Nobody wants to be put in that spot. No. Anyway, this hand was suggested on Twitter by James Kimball. If you have a suggestion, tweet it at us. Include a YouTube link. We're going to break down this hand as we go, so get ready for some analysis. This time he looks down at a big hand, ace jack of clubs. And is a consummate pro, far more experienced than these other two guys at the table. Raises $90,000. Makes it $140,000 to go. Chris Bell staring down at a 7-6, a little suited connector. Well, it's the kind of hand you like to see a flop with. If you hit this hand, maybe you can take a guy's chips from him. He's now our chip leader with close to $2.6 million. And he's going to call it. Yep, he's making the call, hoping to get lucky and hit a flop. Gavin Smith with King 5. No, he's going to throw it away. So two-way action, Ted Forrest and Chris Bell. Ted with the ace jack of clubs. Chris Bell with the 7-6 of diamonds. Here comes the flop. Well, it's come jack 8-7. Oh, boy. Big hand there for Ted Forrest. Top pair with the ace kicker. Chris has flop bottom pair. Chris quickly checks. Ted has top pair and top kicker, as we say, and bets 170. And without hesitation, Chris Bell calls him. He doesn't buy it. Ted hitting his top pair on the flop, and he's getting action. So Chris Bell, not even thinking for a moment, just quickly calls with the two sevens. Okay, here comes the turn card. It's a deuce of spades. Helps neither player. Well, again, Chris checks. Nearly 700,000 in the pot right now. 250. Now, Ted bets 250,000. This is not a very big bet into a pot that has nearly 700,000 in it. Well, he loves his hand. He feels he's in great shape. We know because of the WPT cam, he is indeed. You're right. He wants to get some value out of this hand. He wants his man to continue calling. 700,000. Oh! Without hesitation, oh. Chris Bell raising here, Vince. Oh, I cannot believe it. He's he... making it 700000 to go. He's re-raised 450000 Well, the interesting thing, he doesn't believe Ted. Ted raised before the flop. He doesn't think he hit a jack. He thinks he could possibly take this pot away right now. Well, he's sure trying to do it. We know Ted is actually pretty strong here. How do you, you can't get away from this, you would figure. Well, you certainly thought you had the best hand, but now you start thinking, whoa, did this guy flop a straight? The flop three of a kind. Is he four flushing with a pair? We know he only has a little pair. A piece of it, pair of sevens. He believes he's actually out in front. He thinks Ted raised before the flop, didn't hit. Thinks he can get him out of this pot right now. And that's the brilliance of the raise. <laughs> There's no way Ted's going to put him on two sevens here. <laughs> because of the WPT hole cam by Budweiser, we can see that Ted is far in front here. But when you're sitting at that table, you're going for a million bucks. And the man's check raised you about a half a million dollars. Let me tell you, one pair doesn't look so attractive anymore. Oh, boy, but look at this. He's going to make a call. Just a terrific call yes, right there. Yes, it is. What a call by Ted Forrest here. And Chris Bell did not like it, I can tell you that. There's already a lot of weird, not-so-subtle stuff coming off of Chris Bell. But before we talk about that, let's talk about the gameplay just a little bit so far. Pre-flop is fine. Everybody played it fine pre-flop. Sure. On the flop is fine. Everybody played it fine on the flop. Sure. But that's when we start to see a problem from Chris Bell. He starts doing kind of amateurish physical things. He calls. Look how fast he calls this flop bet. It's weird. Why would you call so fast? It implies a few things, right? 
Number one, it implies a medium strength hand. Usually it does. And the reason it implies that is because it's saying, I don't have a decision here. I'm not folding and I'm not raising. It's always a call, so I'm gonna call. Now, I gotta tell you, I don't think Chris Bell is doing this only because he actually has a medium strength hand. I think he's trying to slow down Ted Forrest so Ted doesn't bet the turn because Chris doesn't really want to face a turn bet with this right. hand. It's kind of another amateurish thing he's yes. doing that you see all the time. It's kind of akin to when a guy's out of position and he's fumbling with his chips like he's gonna bet and then he doesn't bet and he's like, I guess I'll check to you. You go for it, buddy. It's kind of like saying, I don't want you to bet, right? Yeah. That's what that means. And that's what Chris Bell is saying about the turn. He's saying, look how fast I called. You can't bet, I'm gonna call again, right? right? So then the turn happens, right? The turn happens. The turn happens. The turn happens. It does. Yeah. It did. It, I don't like the turn. Why not? Because of what Chris Bell did. Oh, I see. Well, let's talk about that then, <laughs> okay, shall let's. we? So Ted bets a very reasonable bet after Chris checks, and then Chris raises. Yes, and he raises relatively quickly, not as fast as his bet on the flop, or no. his call on the flop, excuse me. It's a relatively quick raise, though. Jonathan timed it. It was about 17 seconds. Right. In spots like this, people usually take a lot longer than that for such a big moment. Some people don't. It's okay. That's not a huge deal. A bigger deal is, why is he raising with this hand? Right. What's going on here? So if we're going to give him all the credit in the world, right, and say... Okay, let's give him all of it. Let's assume all right. we're giving him all the credit. This would be designed to fold out a slightly stronger hand. Right. Hands like ace-8 two nines and two tens, maybe a very weak jack like jack 10. Okay, there's some problems with that. Yes, why don't you go Problem ahead. Problem number one, Ted Forrest isn't always going to fold those hands because he's not necessarily going to believe Chris Bell. So that's problem number okay, one. Okay, sure. Problem number two, Ted Forrest is very unlikely to bet a lot of those hands. If I were Ted Forrest, I would never bet ace eight on the turn. I would never bet two nines. I would never bet two tens. Maybe not never, but it would be very infrequent. Those are really good check back hands. Well, let's remember it is 2005. Yeah. And so people, some people did a lot more sort of raising with their top pair than they do now. So it's possible Forrest might bet a hand like two nines or two tens assuming that Bell would have raised his jack on the flop, which sounds I, crazy I mean, that does now. sound crazy. It I sounds don't know. insane. It's hard to go back 12 years I and mean, figure this out. I mean, even so, we're bending over backwards to try to make this raise yeah, okay because we have to be targeting specifically those hands. Because if Forrest has a bluff, then it's okay just to call. And if Forrest has a value hand, he's usually going to have a hand that he can call with because it's unlikely to bet those hands that we mentioned. What's important to remember here is the massive ICM implications Huge. of all of this. Third place, which they've already won, is $280,000. Second place is $580,000. And first place is $1.15 million. They used to do money jumps different, I guess. Yeah, they did. Yeah. So that's in play too. So as Chris Bell, while we can put ICM pressure on Ted, Ted decided to bet twice. And by the way, look at Chris Bell's face. Look at this face. He's obviously giving up, right? I'm sure he's not even trying to hide from Ted Forrest that, wow, you've got a strong hand and I'm done, Yeah. right? This is a massive pot right We're now. Over two million in the pot. River card coming up. Here it is. Oh, it's a seven. Oh. Chris Bell has made three sevens. He hit the slot machine here. He now has the best hand. Absolute wow. Loot disaster here. This is unbelievable. You make the right move. He's going to get punished. And if Ted called on the turn, how is he going to fold a bet now here on the river? And look at Chris doing every type of Marlon Brando take he could possibly think of. Just gonna milk this like a Holstein. And here it comes. Vince, notice what happened here, though. You know, when he raised a minute ago, it was instantly in with nothing. Yeah. Now all of a sudden he's made a big hand, and now he's <laughs> taking his time on making a bet. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's so true. It's so true. We get to see this performance live here <laughs> there's subtleties but i tell you it's what's at stake is so big you you got to do this kind you got to be this good of an actor well he's looking oh. back at his two cars to make sure he has that third seven he can't believe he hit three sevens lips trembling talking to himself mumbling little mumbles remember this folks i'm all in and now he says i'm all in oh there it is well he's gone all in he took all that time and then he moved all in and now he's gotten up and walked away from the table and ted just eyeing him like a fox oh it's just a complete debacle for ted forrest <laughs> poor guy makes a brilliant move playing this hand so well. well let me tell you you call him on the turn because you think you have the best hand and now all of a sudden the guy's moved in on the river i mean ted is never going to put him on a pair of sevens here no. when he made that half million dollar raise <laughs> Tell you something, Ted Forrest has had some of the toughest decisions to make here mm. in the last few pots. I mean, really, really tough decisions. 
And he's looking up to the sky for help here, Vince. I used a chip jet there. I just went all in, and now I ain't got no pressure on me. <laughs> to, uh, I'm telling you, in the high-stakes poker games and any poker game, Ted Forrest can read his opponents as well as anybody. And now he's listening to Chris over there, saying if you just move all in, you don't have to worry about anything. You just move in. If he calls, it's over there for Ted Forrest. Let's not forget that. He's making a great lay down. Wow. What a lay down by Ted Forrest. We want to make something very clear here. This is usually a call from Ted Forrest. This is a seven on the river. You never really expect that to change anything, right? Certainly not. And the reason why it's got to be a call almost always, in lieu of maybe some of the things we're about to talk about anyway, is because of the extraordinary price that Ted Forrest is being laid. Three to one. That is correct. And the inflection point in this hand is supposed to have been on the turn when Ted called the check raise, which is why Chris Bell, by the way, made the face. Yeah, he knew he was done. He knows he's getting called on the river. He figures Ted's got a hand like ace, jack, or queens, or kings, or aces, I yeah. think. He's like, all right, forget it. I'm not going to try anymore. I don't have to hide it. Yeah. But then he hits this miracle seven. And then look at this. Let's just talk for a second about what Chris Bell is doing here. Look how different he looks than he looked on the flop and on the turn. Even on the turn where he was making an aggressive action, which he is again, he looks so different. Take a look again at the turn here. That's very different than what's happening now. Look at him count his chips. He looks just so comfortable, so at ease. Also, the, when he check raised the turn, 17 seconds. This hand right here, this play, a minute. A it full takes minute. a lot longer. Suddenly, he looks confused. What should I do? He tries to give that face. But why would he do that if he was bluffing? Right. right? Especially in a spot where Ted Force is sort of forced to call him. Yeah. Right? He's doing all of this stuff, bending over backwards to try to make it look like, I don't know what he's trying to make it look like, a bluff, I guess. Yeah, he's trying to make it look like, well, geez. Well, I think actually one thing he's trying to do is he's doing all this counting of his chips to sort of say, well, my only move is to put you all in, Ted. Because yeah. the pot is such, you only have half a pot bet left anyway. I'm just going to move you all in now that I figured that out, I'm going to go all in rather right. than just saying I'm all in and trying to make it look, quote, stronger, yeah. which would be weaker in theory. It's right? all classic reverse tells. He was yeah. doing the thing on the flop where he called very fast, trying to imply strength when really that's weakness. You raised pretty quickly on the turn with a lot of authority, looking strong, yeah. implying weakness. Now he's trying to look like he doesn't really know what he's going to do. He doesn't really understand anything. He's, eh, I don't know. I'm just you know, <laughs> playing poker over here. I guess I'm going to go all in. I don't know. I'm going to go stand up and talk to my buddies now. I mean, who jokes with their buddies? And this kind of ICM spot, when they just go all in, giving the other player three to one right. after they call the check raise on the turn, no one does that as a bluff. Even Lee Childs just asked his dad for advice. You know, he wasn't yeah. really joking around. He no. was just ha asking for advice. So what Chris Bell did was give it away. Because look at Ted Forrest. He's looking at Chris Bell. Ted Forrest is a consummate professional. Oh, man. He knows, like, just throughout this entire hand, it just feels so much more like Ted Forrest knows what he's doing. Ted Forrest almost has a, almost has a home court advantage yeah. because he's played so much live poker. He's just sitting there, taking it all in. He looks super calm and comfortable. A lot of people, it would be very painful to fold this hand. I think it would hurt me. It, I mean, it would hurt. And I think it hurt Ted Forrest a little bit. I mean, he's getting a great price. He has one of the better hands he ever shows up with. Right. He knew he had the guy in the turn most of the time. And then something just changed, and it shouldn't have based on this card on the river, but you can see it in Chris Bell, and Ted Forrest obviously sees it too. Something has changed in Chris Bell, and it's enough information for Ted Forrest to make this really good fold. It's really something. If Chris Bell could have just counted to 17 like he did on the turn <laughs> and go all in in a similar way, I think Ted Forrest is just going to have to and call pretty not, much always. <laughs> and not get up and talk to your buddies. Yeah. You know, that's probably a bad idea. By the way, Chris Bell ends up finishing third in this event for a second. So Forrest makes $300,000 by making this fold. Nice job, Ted. So what do you think, people? Is there a way that Chris Bell could have gotten called? Yeah. Should Ted <laughs> Forrest have called once he called on the turn? What other mistakes were made in this hand? <laughs> Let us know in the comments. We'll respond to our favorite ones right up here. We all can admit there were some crazy physical tells in that hand, right? I think we can admit that. Those are some of the more fun hands to break down, and we've done quite a few of them. If you want to check them out, click right up there. It's a great, great playlist of stuff. Lots of cool hands and lots of great examples yeah. of the hands. Also, check out our podcast. We spent, what, 39 minutes talking about this hand, all the tells, and all the decisions in much, much more depth and detail than we can on this video. So check that out. It's called The Breakdown. And of course, if you like this video, make sure you subscribe to our channel.